history in 2008, and we work together with two conservation programs. Uh, one of them is actually here in Ireland, the other one is in Asia. And uh, the one here in Ireland is called the Golden Eagle Trust. They started reintroducing birds back in 1997 with golden eagles just to get a few birds back, because they're doing quite bad here in Ireland, and that's because of a lack of food habitat change, but also being prosecuted. And the golden eagles, they don't do very, very well. Last year they had two chicks, but unfortunately the two chicks died on a very young age. The cold weather, they were And in 2007 they started two other programs. One of them was in Wicklow, Red Kites. So they're doing really good. 41 chicks just last year. And that's just the chicks that we found. Obviously the parents are going to hide the chicks quite well. It's quite difficult finding them. So 41 chicks is a really good number, and hopefully this year they go above it. Because as soon as they reach above it and reach about 50 or even 60, we're allowed to take those chicks from Wicklow and release them somewhere else, as red kites don't spread very far. Unlike the white-tailed eagles that have been reintroduced in Killarney National Park down in Kerry, they're spreading all around Ireland, and the first couple that have managed to hatch and fledge a chick was right here in Mount Shannon in County Clare. Um, that one had a GPS tracker on her back and is flying around all around Ireland. Same as a chick from last year who actually took off to Northern Ireland and is in between Northern Ireland and Donegal now. So if you want to know where they are, just go to the Golden Eagles Trust web. They will update the location quite often. And uh, <coughs> all the birds that you see flying around, try to look at the wings because most of those birds will have a wing tag on the left the right wing. That identifies a bird from where it's been bred in what area, so it will help us to try and find it back and see if it still goes all right. But what is flying around here somewhere is Bassi, and Bassi is an African battler eagle. Uh, so not native to Ireland, you do find them all over Africa, the sub saharas and they're quite plentiful, they're doing really well. Sometimes they look a little bit different. Bassi is quite dark colored when the females go. Uh, they have a little bit of white on the, just on the shoulders there. And you have actually bachelor eagles who are almost cream brown on the front chest. Batty here is a male, and a little bit smaller than the females. The females are always a third bigger. That's just a little bit better team. It's different prey, different sizes. But most of the time, actually, they don't really hunt at all. Batty is a great scavenger. And he will look for his food as well. He's dead just because it's easier. Uh, food is what is dead, it's not going to run away, is it? So, what you need to do eat it, it's not going to fight back. So, to find it, he goes up nice and high. He will use thermals, warm rising air. And uh, when he is up nice and high, about four or five thousand feet, he's able to spot his food. And obviously, if we go up that high, it's not so cold, he's going to spot anything. And that's just because our eyesight is not as good as Batty's. As you can see about eight times better, more colors, you can see more details, uh, as you can see also UV. UV is reflecting on blood and tissue. That's the reason most people have actually sunglasses on because it's hurting your eyes. That's tanning your skin. And uh, that's what as you can see. So all the little chickens I'm gonna throw on the ground now, right? When he sits up on a towel there, it's actually quite easy to spot. You see this here? My fingertip. It's disappearing now, isn't it? It's not so long, is it? Bashi is going to have no problem spotting it. That's because Bashi is spotting that human being. So imagine if Bashi is over the African savannas and you have a whole wildebeest. I mean, that's like a massive blow of food sign, isn't it? And that's why it's scavenged about 80% of the time, just because it's easier. And when it comes down, it was actually quite funny, he would dip his wings dramatically from left to right. And that's because Batty is missing something. That's actually how he got his name, Battleur. Battleur means a type of walker, juggler uh, in French. And the reason for that is because he's dipping his wings just like a type of walker would do to keep his balance. The only reason he does that is because he's missing something. So if you look at Batty's shape, when he comes back here, what is he missing? A tail, exactly. He doesn't have a very long tail. And a tail acts like a runner with a bird. So Batty here is not very maneuverable. I mean, he's not going to fly in between trees because he's going to crash probably in the first one. Imagine him flying around here. It's not going to happen. So he uses uh, open spaces to get his food. The reason he has a short tail is actually because he hunts on sticks. And he does it in a very cool way. He will literally come down and hit him 
with his feet. And then he'll go up straight up and then looping. And then he'll hit them again till the snake is dead. And that snake is obviously going to protect himself. And then he has uh, the battle after it's a venomous snake. He's kind of in trouble. But he has beautiful feathers you see all around him. And they're kind of puffed up, aren't they? So when he's trying to catch his spray, and that snake's going to bite him, he's going to bite him those feathers. Just like our hair, there's absolutely no blood circulation going through. So it doesn't affect Batty at all. And then he's just every single bit of that snake. Skin, bones, everything. And with a snake, I don't think it actually gets digested. But the chicken I give him here, the feathers are coming out even more. So they will be digested. So this big yellow, this is the color of the feathers. And Batty here, I actually find him on here. He's kind of a gentle eagle, and if you do want to go, just pop your hand up for me in the air. They're all German, so it takes a little longer, doesn't it? Yeah, you want to go? <laughs> so we're all at the tram like this. And so if you walk up to me, I just put your glove on your left hand. You German as well? No. Oh, that's all right then. I thought, why is it going? Keep it nice and hard, just like that. And uh, while it sits on the hand, it's quite important that your hand is higher than your elbow. And that's just because the bird always has to sit on the highest point. So imagine what happens when you drop your hand, you end up on your head. Thanks. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, I just want to see how many of you guys are German. One? I that's not sure. There's a lot more there. Who's German? German? That's not tough. Oh, I thought there were more, actually. He's going to fly over your head at me. Now, if you look at Bassi, I mean, he's quite a big bird, isn't he? Uh, it's actually a lot lighter than you would expect. Batty only weighs four pounds. It's about 1,850 grams. And the reason he's so light is because most of his bones in his body are hollow, except the ones up his ankles. Just to make him lighter, easier to fly, plus some less effort. Anyone else? Yeah.